Run from me. don't know? Oh, good. That's good. So they didn't send you after me. Where's the gentleman I'm supposed to meet? Oh my goodness, me. They must know he was talking to someone on the inside. They'll be watching everyone closer now. I knew this was a mistake. Mortimer, if he realizes it was me the investigator was planning to meet, he'll have me killed. Yes, the White Glove Society strictly forbids eating humans. But we weren't always the White Glove Society. Mortimer and some of the others have regressed to the old ways. They've taken many people over the last few months, but always from freeside or secluded places where they wouldn't be missed. It wasn't enough. Lately, they've gone for tourists here on the Strip, even in the hotel. I guess that's the hazard of a cannibal becoming a gourmet. It's hard to please a refined palate. He's alive, as far as I know. We're trying to keep him fresh. Mortimer has special plans for him. The White Glove Society has a banquet every night at 7. It's in our private section. Mortimer wants to reintroduce humans into our cuisine. Since eating people is a crime we punish by death, he's going to do it in secret. After everyone has eaten it, he'll tell them. With no real way to punish everyone, in Mortimer's mind anyway, their minds will be open to the idea of eating people as a delicacy. They might, but to him, the legacy of returning to the old ways is worth his own life. I don't think he expects it, though. I don't either. Nothing is more important to the society than being on the cutting edge of New Vegas cuisine. Mortimer's idea will appeal to that need. He just has to get them over the taboo. I don't know exactly. I wasn't in on it. I think some of them stopped trusting me. But you can bet they're keeping him near the gourmand. Our chef, Philippe, has an obsession with fresh ingredients. It'd be back in the members only section, so you'll have to be careful. Don't be seen, and more importantly, don't let them see Ted in the open. It's guarded both at the lobby entrance and in the access tunnels leading from the main restaurant. I could sponsor you as an honorary member. The White Gloves are always looking for people who can elevate their status. You'd certainly fit the bill with everything you've done around here. Otherwise, you'll have to find some way to get inside quietly. It won't be easy. And it'll be harder still to get them out. Hmm. Well, they'll all be sampling pre-war wines before the meal. Maybe it's as simple as drugging them. Although, that wouldn't stop any future kidnappings. You'd have to expose Mortimer. But he's going to confess anyway. What if... What if his revelation were a lie? What if no one had eaten human flesh but him? If you could somehow replace Philippe in the kitchen and serve a convincing substitute instead... You could walk Ted right through the middle of that room after Mortimer speaks, and then he'd have some explaining to do. Philippe has been trying to approximate the taste of human flesh for years. He must have a recipe somewhere. That may be true, but I wouldn't recommend it. He's built a reputation, and it isn't for calmness and impartiality. He's not what he looks like. They call him Hurricane Heck. The man built his empire by hiring mercenaries to drive off the competition. Lately, he's been attacking our Brahmin suppliers so he can take over their business. He's the sort to pound in a nail with a wrecking ball. If you give him the whole story on this, he'd be liable to raise the entire hotel. And God knows what he'd do to the rest of the strip. Let's plan on meeting again as soon as... Wait, did you hear something? Were you follow? Oh. 
Why are you standing still? Do you think the world waits for you while you stand there drooling? Get back out there and get to work. Who do... Who the fuck do you think I am? I'm the fucking god of New Vegas Brahmin Fusion Cuisine, that's who. No, no, that doesn't even give me the credit I deserve. I fucking invented edible food. Do you like eating? Good. You owe me your entire goddamn garbage existence. Oh, really? So despite your filthy face and your vacant expression and your complete lack of human dignity, you're telling me you're not a server? What, me? The supreme ruler of the Nevada dining scene? Teach some low-life halfwits how to make food that doesn't smell like burning excrement? Do you think it would sell? You're pushing your luck. Here, I have a few copies on me. This better be good enough. We're gonna have a real problem if this thing isn't a hit. What kind of harebrained fucking psychobabble bullshit is that? I yell at people because I like yelling at people, and because they fucking deserve it. Not because Mumsy and Daddykins didn't hug me enough. Oh, I see how it is. You think because my father walked out on us when I was five, now I have to yell at people. Or because my mother was a deranged chem fiend who regularly brought strange men home who told me to call them uncle. Or because my sisters would lock me in a shipping crate when they didn't want me around. And my brother... God, I'd forgotten about that. How could they do that to me? I can't stay here. I need to be alone. Forget about the fucking banquet. You know what? You can do it. You be the star chef. Take my recipes. It won't fill the hole, though. Just remember that. You'll always feel empty. My daddy's gonna kill all you bastards once he finds out what you done to me. My daddy sent you? God damn it. I almost died in here. What the hell took you so long? It's just one damn hotel. Who did this to me anyway? They hit me over the head before I got a look at him. All right, fine. I'm right behind you. Welcome to the Ultra Lux. Why, yes, of course. The White Glove Society is the most exclusive club in all of New Vegas. Perhaps the entire world. It's only natural that you'd need a sponsor from within the club, who can vouch for your good name. Originally, we didn't allow anyone else in, you see. Founding members only. We thought exclusivity would make us the envy of everyone, who's anyone. And it has. But then I had the idea to allow honorary members. Lower in status, naturally, but it just makes people want to be us even more. And the right people could certainly do wonders for our image. Celebrities, philanthropists, we want only the very best. And you most certainly fit the bill. Given your deeds on the strip alone, I can safely say that you would be a prized addition to our honorary ranks. You have my full support, and you are welcome to join us at our nightly banquets in our special section of the Gourmand. I hope to see you there. Ta-ta! What the... Who is this trespasser? What are you... Why is he there? Who are we eating right now? No! These are lies. I never kidnapped anyone. And even if I did, there's no harm done. He's alive, after all. You're all hypocrites. How can you claim to be connoisseurs yet deny yourselves the greatest of all meats? I am ashamed to have once called everyone here family. This isn't over, though. I'll begin anew. The White Glove Society will never achieve the greatness of my new order. You'll all hear from me again. Oh, oh my. How unfortunate. And in front of all these people, too. 
He always was a bit of a pill, Mortimer. He was so pouty when I decided to ban eating people. And now this. I should have paid more attention to the warning signs. Can you imagine what people would have said? Why, it would have been a complete scandal if it weren't for you. Ta-ta. You got me my boy back. I got no words. Now, I hope you didn't do no harm to whoever's responsible for this. I want to skin their hides myself. Confound it. I just don't know how I'm supposed to sleep knowing whoever done this got away. All right. Well, I promised you I'd make it worth your while. So here you are. Try not to lose it all at the same casino. You should have seen Mr. House when he heard what you did to the Omeritas. He was as giddy as a schoolboy. I'm Jane, one of Mr. House's girls. We keep him entertained. We don't get many guests lately. Perhaps we can entertain you as well. Oh, there's lots of things to tell, I'm sure. There's the three families, the casinos, the other attractions. What would you like to know? They're just new money, sugar. They might pretend they're sophisticated, but between you and me, they're not far off from tribals. Their marriages especially are just awful brutes. The chairman and the White Glove Society at least pretend to have some culture. Well, of course, there used to be a lot more of them. But these days, there are three open to the public. The Tops, the Ultra Lukes, and Gamora. And the Lucky 38, of course. But we're not open to the public. You're a special case, sugar. Well, let's see. The NCR has an embassy here. But why you'd want to go talk to a bunch of boring old politicians, I surely don't know. Oh! And the Vault 21 Hotel and Gift Shop has an adorable collection of old Vault Tech memorabilia. And I suppose, if you like neon signs, you might check out Michelangelo's sign shop. Anything you like, sugar? Not many people know this, but Mr. House is one of the world's biggest collectors of antique snow globes. If you happen to find any out in the wasteland, you can bring them to me, and I'll add them to his collection. You'll get a reward, of course. In fact, one of Mr. House's favorites went missing when we moved the collection. If you have a look around the Lucky 38, you might even find it. You do? Why, that's just wonderful. I'll take them and put them with the rest of the collection. Why, I'm a Robco PDQ-88B Mark I Securitron, you silly goose. We're the finest in personal civil robotic security on the market. This is the Lucky 38 Resort and Casino, or it used to be. Mr. House has kept the place locked up tight for ages now. Nobody comes in or out. Why, Sugar? He's the maximum utmost. If it weren't for Mr. House, we wouldn't have this fabulous wonderland of New Vegas, would we? Well, of course I am, silly. Mr. House is just the smartest, most wonderful man there ever was. Why, did you know he single-handedly reclaimed New Vegas from all those nasty tribes that used to live here? Well, he single-handedly sent in his Securitrons to do it, but that counts in my book. Sugar, I may be a robot on the outside, but on the inside, my neurocomputational matrix is an exact copy of Mr. House's favorite girl. Mr. House has a lot of needs, sugar. I take care of all of them, and a lady doesn't kiss and tell. Then maybe you shouldn't pry into a lady's particulars, hmm? Anything you like, sugar? You've been a busy courier, haven't you? You take your obligation to deliver a package very seriously, an ethic for which I am grateful. I will admit, when you ignored my invitation, I predicted negative outcomes. But you have a way of exceeding expectations, don't you? Well, enough. Let's have the chip then.
I'll be happy to satisfy your every curiosity once the platinum chip has been delivered. Fine. Give me the chip and I'll pay you four times the delivery bonus stipulated in your contract. How's that? Very well. Five times your delivery bonus. Not one cap more. Such a small thing, isn't it? And yet so... capacious. So very dear. Decades of hiring salvagers out west to search for this little... relic in the ruins of a place called Sunnyvale. Back then, anyway. That's where the chip was printed on October 22nd, 2077. It was to have been hand-delivered to me here at the Lucky 38 the next day. But the bombs fell first. Suffice it to say, the delivery was never made. A great deal shall be happening. A cascade of events with you taking a central role. At the moment, however, all you need to do is take the elevator all the way down to the bottom level. You'll understand soon enough. to the demonstration area, if you would. I expect you're well familiar with my Securitrons by now. The titanium alloy housing that protects its electronic core deflects all arms that travel easily enough. Its X-25 Gatling laser produced to spec by Glassing House Inc. is deadly against soft targets at medium range. And for close range suppression or crowd control, the Securitron is armed with a 9mm submachine gun. All of this you probably already knew. What you did not know is that these are the Securitron's secondary weapons. All this time, my Securitrons have had to get by running the Mark I operating system, which lacked software drivers for their primary weapons. Today, with the delivery of the Platinum chip, all that changes. Behold, for the first time, Securitrons running the Mark II OS. The M235 missile launcher gives the Securitron the ability to gain ground air targets at significantly longer ranges. And a rapid-fire G28 ensures the Securitron is deadly in close-range engagements. The software upgrade also includes drivers for the Securitron's highly sophisticated onboard auto repair systems. Altogether, the Mark II software upgrade confers a 235% increase in combat effectiveness per unit. The city of New Vegas finally has soldiers worthy of protecting it. Return to the penthouse now. We have much to discuss. Trips to the basement are rarely so educational, don't you think? I've since broadcast the upgrade to every Securitron in range of my transmitters, and I must say, it's causing quite a stir down on the strip. Why would I want to go to war against the NCR? They're my best customers. If their leaders weren't scheming to steal Vegas out from under me, I'd have no troubles with the NCR at all. To secure the future of New Vegas, I must have your assistance. The work ahead is dangerous, but you weather danger well. The next step will require you to infiltrate Caesar's camp at Fortification Hill. Absolutely not. Caesar is of great use to me. I don't want you harming a hair on that man's head, assuming you could find one. I want you to open a hatch in the basement of the derelict weather station atop Fortification Hill. You'll recognize it on sight. The hatch bears the logo of the Lucky 38, same as the Platinum chip. You can't, but the chip can. The hatch will recognize the Platinum chip and open sesame. Something very important. I wouldn't want to spoil the surprise, so don't bother asking. Here, take the platinum chip again. You will need it. Upon arrival at the fort, it's likely that you'll be searched and the chip taken from you. Don't worry, it will come back to you.
Excuse me, but are you the courier who caused all of that trouble in the tops? Oh, great. The followers of the apocalypse, well, some of us anyway, have been interested in Mr. House's technology, how he stays alive. Of course, no one else is allowed inside the Lucky 38, so no one knows what's going on. Well, except for you. Right. We just want to find out what sort of technology Mr. House has used to stay alive for all these years. It could be of great benefit to the people we try to help, many of whom suffer from hard-to-diagnose illnesses. Ah, I see. I suppose I can give you some medical supplies for your efforts. I assure you, they will be worth plenty of caps. Great! I'll have the medical supplies for you by the time you come back. Here, take this packet sniffer. It'll allow us to intercept data on Mr. House's network. You might have to manually remove the encryption from his data network, but hopefully you won't have too much trouble. Good luck. Hey, have you been able to bug Mr. House's network yet? Good to hear. But it looks like the bug was deactivated a few minutes after it went online. It looks like House has some kind of countermeasure in place to prevent eavesdropping on his network. We'll get through eventually, just not today. Here are those medical supplies I promised. Hopefully you won't need to use them. Take care. Please, help me. Thank God. Let me down, please. Thanks for getting me down from that cross. I owe you one. A Legion patrol caught me trying to cross the river. When they found the, um, package I was carrying, they strung me up there. Well, not exactly. More like trying to expand our markets. I heard there was a lot of untapped territory down south. But the Legion caught me. They did? <laughs> Probably mostly Jack's idea. He always was the soft touch. Thanks. You've saved my life and done the Great Cons a huge favor. I'll be heading back to Red Rock Canyon now. Maybe we'll see each other there. Okay, but keep it quick. I'd like to get out of here before the Legionnaires come to check on me. So long. I'll wait. Are you ready to head upriver? I am Cursar Lucullus, and my orders are to escort you to the Legion's camp at Fortification Hill. Are you ready to go? You'll be meeting face to face with the mighty Kaisar himself. Founder of the Legion, conqueror of 86 tribes. To my knowledge, this is the first time Kaisar has ever summoned one of the dissolute to see him. Not even tribal chieftains receive this honor. All who are not Legion are dissolute. They live in squalor, unrestrained by morality, lacking moderation, temper, and self-control. Their very existence is a blight on the common good. Even worse are the profligates, the subtype of dissolute one finds this side of the river. They hold themselves to be civilized, when in fact they are corrupt and self-interested. The truth will be made clear to them soon enough. You'd know better than I would, but you must be remarkable for Kaisar to take such an interest. The trip will take a few hours. Take your place on the boat. By order of Kaisar, all visitors must disarm and relinquish all banned items. This order also extends to the platinum chip you carry. For now. Your belongings will be returned to you when you leave. You're the courier who caused so much trouble for my legion. And yet you dare come before me. All the bribes I sent to the Omertas ended up buying me nothing. The garrison I established at Nelson has been wiped out. Years of meticulous scheming to place a mole at Camp McCarran. Wasted. So tell me this, because I really want to know. I am feared with good reason. But you, of all people, dare to come here and stand before me, the mighty Kaisar. What were you thinking? Maybe I should have you struck blind so my face is the last sight you ever behold. Look, you do know why I wanted to meet you, right? A man nearly kills you, so you track him across the breadth of the Mojave. 
You arrive on the strip and waltz into the Lucky 38 like someone left you a key under the doormat? You assassinate the head of the chairman in his own casino and get away with it? Then something happens to Mr. House's robot, some kind of military upgrade? When you set your mind to something, you get results. I like that. The question is, are you ready to get started? I like the servile attitude. Keep it up. The time is fast approaching when my legion will assault the Great Dam and invade the West. Before that happens, I want Mr. House knocked out of the game. A quick one-two punch, with you doing the punching. Down the hill, at the west edge of camp, is an old building. It was here when the fort was taken in 2277. Inside the building is a hatch. And inside that hatch are two steel doors that bear the sigil of the Lucky 38 Casino. Now that same sigil is on the platinum chip you were carrying. Isn't that interesting? Even more interesting, there's a slot about the same size as the chip on the console that opens the hatch. So you know what I think? I think the platinum chip opens those doors. Doors that can't be pried open or drilled open or blasted open. Because all that, I tried. I want you to destroy whatever you find in there. And then I want you to come back here and tell me about it. So go to the building and take this fucking platinum chip with you. My legionaries will meet you there, with your weapons and equipment. Goodbye. I suspect you'll be a valuable asset to the Legion. Assuming you're really on our side, of course. There's a gambler, Martina Grosbeck, who has a knack for learning other people's secrets and passing that information along for a price. The Omertas, who run Gamora, have become suspicious of Martina's frequent visits to their casino. Soon they'll pay her a visit of their own. Good. Martina frequents the Vault 21 gift shop on the Strip. Hurry along, and she still may be in one piece by the time you get there. It is a great honor for anyone outside the Legion to get an audience with Kaiser. We recently obtained an artillery weapon, but we don't have the part or the skill to fix it. The tribe calling themselves the Boomers is obsessed with such weapons, I've been told. You could probably find a spare firing mechanism there. He's the best warrior in the Legion. A full legionary by the time he was 12, he's never lost a battle. Had the Legate been in command during the Battle of Hoover Dam, the Legion would have won. I have no doubt about that. No, Legate Lanius is Kaisar second. The Legate replaced the Burned Man after the Legion's defeat at the Dam several years ago. The Burned Man was Kaisar's advisor and general when the Legion was originally formed. The Burned Man led us to a disastrous defeat at the Dam. On Kaisar's orders, the Burned Man was covered in pitch by the Praetorian Guard, lit on fire, and cast into the Grand Canyon. Kaisar has forbidden us from ever speaking his true name again. And so we simply refer to him as the Burned Man. It's a tradition in the Praetorians to specialize in unarmed combat because weapons can break or jam when needed most. However, our unarmed techniques favor offense over defense. We can charge the enemy and flatten him with our first strike before he can react. I'll answer if I can. When I was a boy, the Legion conquered my tribe. I was chosen for training as a Legionary. I fought in many battles for the Legion. Eventually, Kaisar chose me to lead his Praetorian Guard. It was a great honor. The girls and women were enslaved, and many of the men and boys were also chosen to become legionaries. The rest were killed. We were savages. The Legion raised us up, made us better than what we were. What did you want to talk about? Very well. The NCR Rangers are the biggest threat. Without them, the NCR is nothing. Kaisar has taught us that over-reliance on firearms can only weaken us in the long run. It's why we train heavily with our blades and our fists. 
Unlike an NCR trooper, a legionary is always ready to fight, regardless of the circumstance he finds himself in. We had the numbers, but not the tactics. I know. I was there at Boulder City when we were defeated. We relied too much on veteran legionaries for direction and leadership. And the Rangers exploited our weakness by killing our best from afar. And just about every one of them is occupied. Not all at the same time, usually. Groups of legionaries come and go all the time. This is also only one camp of many. You might have noticed the other camps down by the river. Wally, 